these aren't just women's issues. These are issues of personal autonomy and freedom, which supposedly is something that Paul Ryan is really interested in until it comes to a woman's uterus. And although he expressed himself inelegantly, and it seems like abstinence-only education is not working very well for Republicans, there is not a substantive difference between Paul Ryan's position and Todd Akin's position. And in fact, Todd Akin is a member of Congress. The House of Representatives, ever since it was taken over by Republicans, job number one has been legislating women's reproductive rights. I would love it if the expanded version was like the second coming of bell hooks and was some sort of immigrant, you know, <laughs> no capital reckoning. letters in it at all. Yeah, and, and only, you know, reparative justice for Native Americans. It's true there are really significant and important expansions uh, to VAWA this time around. I think they've been overhyped mostly by House Republicans. Uh, they were especially worried about the provision that applies to non-Native men on Native American reservations uh, that can be prosecuted now by the tribal courts. That is the provision that definitely has the most impact. Look, the tragedy is that across the board, whether we're talking about abortion care or maternal mortality, there are unforgivable racial disparities in terms of the level of care that women get. No doubt. And if Gosnell, in fact, is guilty of what he's charged of, this is an example of that. I just literally cannot think of a single winning proposal that they have to women, except if they want to say, you hate President Obama. And increasingly, if single women realize how extreme these views are, that these are not isolated, this is not one crazy guy, this is a policy platform, then there's really reason to turn out in November. Aaron Kamon, thank you so much for joining us. Basically, what's happening is that throughout all of these Republican-controlled states, they are setting bait with the hope that they will be able to get the case that will challenge Roe v. Wade at the Supreme Court. What we should be focusing on is how do we intervene in this culture that it tells boys that they don't have to respect women as human beings, and if they sexually humiliate young girls, absolutely nothing will happen to them. So if there's anything that we can learn from this one verdict, it is the fact that people need to understand what consent is, what substantial impairment is, and intervene in a toxic culture of masculinity. Well, we're going to have a situation where in some states, women are endowed with full humanity and the right to make decisions for themselves about their health and their bodies, and other states in which it's going to become ever more difficult. And there's lots of ways in which this is a civil rights issue. What I find amazing is that the first few rounds of these battles in the past past year have gone so badly for Republicans, mm -hmm. and they keep restarting them. I mean, this is what is fascinating. In February, there was a National Journal poll that said that 69 percent of people opposed defunding Planned Parenthood, even when they knew that Planned Parenthood performs safe abortions without federal funds. Um, in Virginia, Bob McDonnell, it, it's become political poison, his transvaginal ultrasound thing. Mm -hmm. And yet, here they are restarting the same battles, um, and somehow they think it's going to go differently.